If we rendered our little island scene right now, this is about what it would look like. So it's always good when you're just finishing up a project to go back and fix the little things that will really make a difference. And you'll see by the end of this video how just going back and making a few simple changes will dramatically improve the result of our render. So right now we can first spot out a few key problems. First of all, there's not really any gradation between the sky and the water. It just cuts off at a very sharp edge and normally you'd have a nice atmosphere which would be fading that into the background. Since we don't have any genuine atmosphere inside of Blender, we're going to have to fake that in the compositor. So that's pretty easy to do. Another problem that you'll see is that our lighting is pretty bad. At first I set it up so we'd have this nice uh, reflection on the water when we were setting up the water shader. However, that does look good, but we're not getting much on the island and our lighting is looking pretty poor. Uh, there's not really any reason to have nice lighting on the background object and not have nice lighting on the subject. We always want to emphasize the most important thing in the scene, which in this case is going to be the island and these trees. I also think we need a few more trees. And we can also get rid of this little piece sticking up over here, but when we change the lighting of this HDR, that will also go away. Uh, one thing that I also forgot to do was change the render settings for this sand here. So I had the render subdivision set to 2. If we just increase that to 4, it'll match what we see in the viewport. And there we go. That's all fixed. No big deal. So we can check the eye on this particle system just to see our trees right now. I don't think 50 is quite enough, so let's just change this to 100 and see how that goes. Okay, I think that looks a little bit more lively. Uh, it doesn't look quite as sparse, and so I think that should look quite nice. So we can uncheck that eye. That is finished. Let's see what else we were doing. Oh yes, definitely the lighting. So I guess when we're doing the lighting, we do need that checked on just so we can see how the light interacts with the trees and the shadows that cast on the island. So I'm going to split my view right here. And I can change this side to be a rendered view. Okay, so now we can see our island a bit more clearly. And if I zoom out, I can see the overall lighting of the entire thing. Now I mainly want to focus on this island right here and not have to worry about rendering all this extra. So to speed things up, I'm going to press Shift B and just drag a box around this island. And now it's going to only preview that area. That way things can update and clean up much more quickly. Okay, so let's go to this texture panel right here. And with our environment texture selected, we can rotate this around the z-axis a little bit more so we get more lighting on our plants right here. I think a value of 250 is looking pretty good. Though again, you can see we have these unwanted objects in the background. So let's just go up a little bit higher. Let's go all the way up to 0.1 and that should suffice. So now we don't have quite as nice of a gradation. However, things are looking much better in terms of the island. Now, the one reason the water is so dark is because, well, the sky is kind of dark. So let's increase that a bit as well. Let's just change that from 0.2, let's, or from 2, let's see what it looks like at 4. Okay, that's looking good. Now, one thing that I mentioned at the very beginning is that we want to transition in between the sky and the water. And I guess we could do this in cycles, however, it would be much easier just to do this in compositing. So let's go ahead and do that. In the layers panel, let's add a new layer. And this is going to render in addition to our scene right here. And I'm going to choose this empty layer right here. Now if you if we take a look at that, we can see that all it is is the HDR background and no objects. And so that means that we're just going to get the pure sky and we're going to be able to blend that in with our object if we include a mist pass. So let's go back into solid mode. I guess I can get rid of that window for now and take a look at this first layer. Let me hide these trees real quick. Okay. Let's press Shift B on the outside of the camera to get rid of that safe. Uh, so when we render, we're not rendering the incorrect area. And now we can take a look at our mist pass. So that's something that we can 
get a black and white value in between the farther objects from the camera and the close objects from the camera. And the way we set that up is right here in the layers panel. Uh, we can go down to mist, check that. And if we choose the camera, we can go down to display and display the mist. And to actually change that, we need to go to the world settings, down to mist pass, and change the start and the depth. So we want it to start a little bit past the island and go all the way close to the end. And there we go. So that's going to fade out in between that area. And it's going to use whatever fall off you choose here, which is the same sort of fall offs that you would find on a color ramp or gradient texture, anything like that. Okay, so now that we have our mist pass and everything is fixed, uh, let's go ahead and I'm just going to preview this at 100 samples. So, well, let's all up that to 200 and I'll just pause the microphone and come back to you when it's all finished. So you can render a lower quality, say 50 or 100 samples, um, in case you need to make any necessary changes and go with that. One change that I am seeing that uh, I wasn't really looking at before when I was looking at the render, but it looks like the island and the back of the ocean sort of come up to a straight line and it's a little bit distracting how close they are to each other. So I'm gonna take the island, go into edit mode and just pull this up just a little bit. And what that's going to do is break that horizon line and that way it's not going to line up and create a visual tangent which is going to distract us and be kind of annoying. So with that, let me go ahead and render and see how it looks. I just rendered this and realized that I had the mist pass set on the wrong render layer. Uh, so if that happens, just make sure you select the correct one so I can uncheck that for the sky. And just make sure this doesn't happen in the future. Let's double click this and rename this sky. Double click this one, rename this island. And so we're very clear which one we're using. So I'll re-render this really quickly and be back in just a second. All right, now we have our scene fully rendered and we can go ahead and start compositing this. So what I'm going to do is switch this over from the UV image editor to the node editor. Make sure this is set to compositing nodes and just check use nodes and backdrop. Uh, now when we press control and shift, click on there. Uh, if you're backdrop hadn't popped up already, it will when you add the viewer node. Okay, awesome. So the first thing that we want to do is add that mist that we added in with the render layers. So to do that, let's take this first render layer, which is the island, shift D to duplicate that down, and we'll change that to sky. Uh, so now that we have just the sky and the island, and we're going to use a color and mix node to mix between the two. Okay, so we're going to use that mist as a factor. We can plug that in, and you can see that right away we're getting a nice gradation in between uh, the ocean and the sky. So if you want to change that, you can add a color ramp. So you can add a converter and color ramp. Plug that in on the mist, and if you press Control shift on the color ramp, you can see the black and white values. So maybe you want to change this from linear to ease, get a bit of a softer fall off and there we go we now don't have quite such a harsh line uh, in between the water and the sky and things are looking pretty good so just as a final touch let's add a little bit of color correction to make this scene look a bit better so right now it looks all right uh, but we can do a few things to really improve the look of the entire image as a whole so first I'm going to add a color balance node. So shift A, color and color balance. And that's going to allow us to adjust the lift, gamma and gain and the color of each. So that's really cool. So the lift is primarily going to affect the shadows. Gamma is going to affect the midtones and gain the highlights. Now this isn't entirely accurate, but it's a good way to think about it. Uh, if you'd like to look more into lift, gamma and gain, you can look up the exact definitions online and it will um, explain it exactly. However, however, for this video, uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights will do just fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and take these shadows 
and make them a little bit more blue and also maybe lighten them up just a little bit. Okay, now with the mid-tones, let's brighten up the entire image a little bit by increasing the gamma. We can leave the color as it is for now. And I'm also going to increase the gain. And maybe make this a bit orange. And you can play with these levels as you'd like, uh, just to see what looks best. You can press V on your keyboard to uh, zoom out of this and then alt V is going to zoom back in and that just helps us look at the picture as a whole so if we look at this before and after after is definitely looking better and you can adjust that to your liking two other things I want to add are a little bit of glare and a little bit of a vignette both are super easy to add so let's just add them really quickly first of all glare we can go to filter and glare now I like to add um, a sort of lens flare to this, but of course we don't want to get too crazy with it because, you know, that's uh, definitely not good. But if we change this to ghosts, decrease the threshold all the way to zero, you can see that we now have a super obnoxious lens, fl lens flare right in the middle. Now bear with me on this, so if we increase the color modulation all the way up, we get those nice colors. And if we increase the iterations all the way up, it becomes nice and bright. So of course we don't want this because it would be super annoying, however if we change the mix value, if we increase all the way to 1, we're going to get just the glare. Uh, but if we decrease this to negative 1, we're going to get no glare at all. So that means we can say a value of negative 0.95, and that's going to give us just a little bit. So if we flip between the two, you can see that there's not a huge difference. However, if you're animating the camera or any objects in the scene, this is going to affect the glare and the glare is going to move based on the animation and so it's going to look really nice when you're animating. Now for the vignette, uh, we're going to use an ellipse mask. So let's go to matte and ellipse mask. And we can change the width and the height to roughly match our image. I think the width should be about exactly one. All right. So if you press control shift on that, you can see we have this nice oval here. And to get that vignette, uh, I'm going to blur this. So I can go to filter and Gaussian blur. I guess it would just be a regular blur. Uh, and set the type to fast Gaussian. Now you could do this pixel by pixel. However, if you're changing your image size, it's going to change your results. So what I like to do is set this to relative and say each one blur about 25% and that gives us a nice vignette. Now we can mix that with the original with a color and mix node. So let's go ahead and do that. And a lot of people like to use multiply because you'll see that that will darken the edges. However, I don't like using that because it doesn't necessarily accurately depict uh, what actually happens um, in a camera. So I'm going to use overlay. And what that's going to do is brighten up the center while darkening the edges at the same time. Uh, and we can decrease the factor to get a little more subtle effect. So I say value of 0.5 looks about right. And we can plug that into the composite like so. So you can see that with just a couple minutes of simple node editing, we can go from a very simple, uh, very rough image to a pretty good looking image. All we needed was the right base to work from, which was the work that we put in the last few videos. So that's it for this series on how to create and animate a simple island scene inside of Blender. There was a lot to cover, but I think we made pretty good time, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos.